Well, good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you to this most beautiful time of year and this chance to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus. So I want to cordially welcome you all here, and uh, it's a joy to spend this time with you. And uh, let's, why don't we stand to our feet? We're going we're gonna to worship and celebrate the Lord, but let's, let's stand and let's pray together, can we? God, our hearts are full as we anticipate this beautiful night and all the promise that it holds for us. With the angels, we say glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill to all on whom his favor rests. God, be with us in this time of joy and celebration and make us aware that it is your presence that makes this time so special. And so we invite you to come, Heavenly Father, come, Lord Jesus, come, Holy Spirit, and fill this time and fill our hearts. And may in all that we do and say, may your name be lifted up and your name be glorified. We look forward to you meeting us here in this place. We pray that you would fill us tonight with hope, with your love, with the joy of the Lord, and with peace, the peace that passes understanding. So we open our hearts to all that you have for us. We worship you, we bless your name, and we thank you in advance for what you will do. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Receive a king, let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns, let men their songs employ. worship. We ask that you clap your hands and stump your feet and sing with us. Amen. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching for silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the, over hills. the hills and everywhere. Go. The angels for us that hail the Savior's word. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in the lowly manger, the humble Christ was. Born. God sends us the salvation that 
may be seated as we hear our Advent candle lighting. Well, welcome again, everyone. It is a joy and honor and privilege to be with you tonight. And uh, tonight is the culmination of the Advent season. And if you remember, the Advent uh, season is a time of anticipation and preparation from the, for the coming of Christ. And uh, our waiting is over. Christ has come, and uh, so we celebrate that tonight. So we're going to be lighting all these candles, and uh, the Jan family is going to lead us tonight in uh, this culmination. So thank you, Jan family. Today is Christmas Eve. Today we light the three purple candles and the pink one. We also light the center white candle. We first, the first Sunday, we lit the candle of hope. On the on the second Sunday, we lit the candle of love. On the third Sunday, we lit the candle of joy. On the fourth Sunday, we lit the candle of peace. Today, we also light the center candle. This candle represents Jesus. We light this, can this candle when we remember Jesus' birth. Our waiting has ended. When we look at the center candle, we remember that God sent Jesus to give us hope, peace, joy, and love to all people. Outside of Bethlehem, the shepherds saw great light and heard the voices of the angels. They traveled to the manger and saw baby Jesus. Far away from Bethlehem, wise men saw a star in the sky. They followed the star and were filled with joy when they found Jesus. They remind us that the gift of Jesus was not just for the people in one place, but for all people. Let us pray together. Dear God, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus for all people, not just those in one place at one time. On this Christmas Eve, help us to remember and rejoice again because Jesus was born. May we live every day remembering your love and care by showing that love and care to others. Amen. Good to see you all. Uh, again, we're in just a moment. We're going to have an offering, so you can prepare for that. And uh, we're going to see a beautiful video during that offering. But before uh, we do that, I just want to say a word of praise to God and to thanks to you all. Um, this has been a challenging last couple of years, hasn't it? And uh, this year, 2021, that was supposed to be uh, back to normal, whatever that means now. Uh, not so much, right? And it has been a challenging uh, season for all of us. But you know what? We're still standing. Actually, you're sitting, but I'm standing. And uh, God has good, and he has been faithful, and he's been faithful to this church. And I want to just give praise to God. Um, you know, months ago, we were... Yeah, look, do give thanks. Um, Months ago, we were almost $100,000 behind in budget, as 94%, I understand, of churches in America right now are in this challenging season. But we are so close now to making budget, and that is really a miraculous deal with all that we have been through. And so I give praise to God and 
thanks to you for your generosity, your love for this church and the ministry, and, and uh, just for your love for Jesus and want to see his kingdom and, and the light of Jesus spread. So thank you for that. And just, uh, um, just would love if, if you can do a year-end gift. If the Lord leads you to do that, we sure would love to receive that and to have uh, really go into the new year strong. So I uh, appreciate that and thank you. Uh, I want to invite you back next Sunday. We have a great, or that, not next Sunday, just in a couple days. It, it seems weird, doesn't it? We're coming back. But uh, Sunday, we have a beautiful service planned, and we have a, 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 a message that's entitled Two Silver Dollars and Tabasco Sauce. And yep, you're just going to have to come and find out what that's all about. So that'll be fun. But uh, and so Merry Christmas to you and um, and God bless you in this time of year and in the new year. Let's pray together, can we? God, we're grateful today for your goodness, for your faithfulness in the past. We thank you that you came 2000 years ago in such a humble and extraordinary way, not to princes and to kings but to lowly shepherds and to a young teenager. And I thank you that you came and that you continue to come to us. And Lord, would you meet us here in this place tonight? Lord, fill our hearts with your presence and the gifts that you give that are so lavish. And Lord, we're honored to partner with you and the ministry of this church and your kingdom in the world. Lord, use these tithes and offerings to glorify yourself here in this place and, and in all of our mission partners. And we pray blessing. We're thinking particularly of Pastor Terencio, who is still very sick, our, our pastor in, uh, in Honduras. We're praying for his total healing and blessing. And for all of our, the rest of our mission partners throughout the world, Lord, we're praying blessing on them. And Lord, we open ourselves to receive all the gifts that you have for us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. It all began here, in darkness, stuck in our brokenness, wandering, directionless, in need of a grace we knew nothing about. It's not much of a beginning, but this is where we were. Fast forward to a starry night in Bethlehem. You see, while we were lost in darkness, God was consumed by love. A love which led him to do the unimaginable. A love which would cost him his son. That night, the heart of Christmas began beating with a rhythm that would change the world. Jesus, the Son of God, our Savior, was born. Grace in a manger. Love in the flesh. Hope had overcome hopelessness. Mercy had triumphed over brokenness. And love had overpowered the darkness. Today, we celebrate that moment. We worship our Messiah and we stand in awe of the life-changing gift God has given us. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, the true heart of Christmas.
Father, we are so grateful that we can come into your presence right now. So grateful, Lord God, that we can come into your presence because you are here, <laughs> because you are Emmanuel. You are not sitting in heaven looking down upon us. You are with us. You are not somewhere in the present. You are here with us. You are not a figment of our imagination. You are with us. You are not a part of history and a relic of the past. You are present with us. And so, Father God, we give you the highest praise of hallelujah because you are Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God, thank you so much, Lord God, for your presence with us. Speak to our hearts now as we look, take a brief look into your word. Speak to our hearts and prepare us to receive and to live in the fullness of your presence. It's in Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, amen. amen, amen. You may be seated. I also just want to make sure that we welcome um, those who are watching online, who are joining us online. We, you are a part of our family as well, and we are so glad that you are here. And I'm welcome to, glad to see each of you here um, tonight on this beautiful Christmas Eve. Um, you know what? Tonight... Y'all need y'all to pray for me because I want to preach this message. I just want y'all to know that. But I got about 15 minutes, and so I can't do it. So that's why I call this a Christmas reflection. So if there's, I'm going to leave a whole lot of meat on the bone. That's what I'm just letting you right now. So pull out your teeth and everything else because there's going to be some more meat for you to be able to get on this bone. But there's just a lot, a lot here. But I just want to give you... Uh, a few thoughts on a, a reflection of when God steps in, when God steps in. There is a quote um, from David Ben-Gurion. I'm not sure if any of you all have ever heard of him. He was the very first prime minister of Israel. Yeah, David Ben-Gurion. And many years ago, probably when I was in high school, I saw this quote from him that I have, it, it was so impactful to me that I had it engraved on a plaque, and I've carried it with me probably since 1978. And you know what's funny? I cannot find a quote anywhere online. So I don't know if I made it up. <laughs> so if it is, if, if, if there's anybody here related to David Ben-Gurion and he, ain't say, he didn't say this, <laughs> sorry. But this is the quote. He says, the voice of God speaks to man in our day as it spoke 3,000 years ago. Some believe the voice comes from heaven, others say... Um, that it comes from the heart. What matters is that every man can hear the voice, that voice, if his heart is open to the truth. This is a very, this, I'm telling you, this plaque, this statement has gone with me since, not since I was a freshman in high school. I mean, a freshman in college. 
because it says something to us about Emmanuel. <laughs> it says something to us about the fact that God is with us. We don't have to wonder if he can hear us. We don't have to wonder if he is present. He is with us. He is with us. I remember a few years ago, a young man called me up, and he was all stressed. And matter of fact, he was suicidal. And we talked on the phone. I had never met him. He was the, white, the husband of a, one of my former students. And after we got done, he ended up accepting Christ. And then after he got done, he said, I said, well, you need to continue to pray. He said, I don't know how to pray. I said, dude, you just told me your whole life story, stuff that your old mama didn't know about, and you don't even know me. He says, but I can't talk to God like that. I said, why can't you talk to me like that? He says, because we're on the phone. I said, then the next time you want to call God up, just call him up and say, yo, what's up? I said, just talk to him the same way. I said, and if you're not sure, just pick up the phone because he is Emmanuel. He is with us. But there is something about the fact that we listen to God and we can hear God. And God wants to speak to us. But the question is, are we open to the truth? And here's the truth. God is always speaking. He is always saying something, but sometimes we miss his voice um, because for a number of different reasons that we don't hear what God's saying. Sometimes we're just too busy. Sometimes we're just too focused upon our own agendas. Sometimes we're just simply not paying attention. Sometimes we don't want to hear him. <laughs> we, we know that if we ask him a question... He will respond, and we don't want to know what he's going to say, so we just don't bother to ask him. Again, I know none of y'all think that way, but I do sometimes. And so tonight, the shepherd's story, the shepherd's Christmas story, tells us what it's like to have a close encounter of a divine kind. Some of y'all who are over 30 years old remember that movie, Close Encounters of, what was it? Yeah, okay, well, we're about close encounters of a divine kind. And what happens, I want to talk to you just very briefly about how it changes our life when we respond properly to that close encounter of a divine kind. There is an encounter, and then there is an encounter, and when we have that encounter, the first thing that happens is that there is an awareness that God is speaking. What happened with the shepherds? That night there were, there were shepherds staying in, the fields near, st- staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Now, and what hit me when I read this is that these dudes were just doing their own thing. They were just out doing their jobs. They weren't out. They were not in seminary. They were not out praying and fasting. They were just out smelling like sheep, doing their job, not worrying about anything else, weren't looking for nothing. And all of a sudden, bam, God just steps into their life. The angels just simply come into their life, in their life, and messes with their whole evening. You know, and so as I think about that, in the midst of all of the things that are clamoring for your attention, there are so many different things that are clamoring for attention. You need to be able to hear the voice of God in the midst of that. In the midst of all of the things that say, come here, come there, all of the notifications, all of the bells, all of the phone calls, all of the emails, I have five email accounts that I have to pay attention to. The other day, I deleted 20,000 emails from one account. And I'm looking at this, and then people say, well, Jason, you didn't call me back. I was like, listen, if you don't hear my voice, there's no guarantee that I know you're trying to reach me. And so as I look at that, there are all of these things that are clamoring for your attention. And the question is, do you listen in the midst of all of that? Do you take the time to stop and listen in the midst of your routineness? Yes, you may listen when you're here. Yes, you may be very attentive when you're here. But what about when you're just simply walking down the aisle at Aldi? What about when you're cutting the grass? What about when you're cutting the turkey? What about when you're just driving down the street? Are you paying attention? In the midst of your routineness, God steps in. And it's about paying attention during those times that we can experience a life 
life-changing encounter with God, the God that changes our life. So the question is, God is speaking. That is not the question. The question is, are you listening? Are you listening when God is speaking? So that's the first part of the encounter, the issue of awareness. But then there's something else that happens during this encounter. There's the issue of anxiety. You see, the reality of God speaking, the voice speaking into our lives can bring about anxiety. It says, they were terrified. They were terrified. You know, there are some words that almost reflexively strike fear in our hearts. Do I have words like that? Let me give you a couple of them. If you're a child, hearing your mother call you by your full name, <laughs> reflexively, Jason Leon Perry, that's all oh, snap, I'm in trouble, right? When you hear the full name, you know you're in trouble. If you are a driver, license and registration, please. Strikes fear. Brother over here, look at, he's sweating right now. I'm saying that he just starts sweating just when, as soon as I said it, right? For us husbands, y'all know what I'm about to say. Honey, we need to talk. Just makes you start to quake. I don't care what's happening. It makes you quake. There's something about the reality of those words, those words coming into our heart that shake us, that make us pay attention, sit up a little bit straighter and to say, wait a minute, I need to listen to what's about to be said. There's a voice of authority that is frightening. What can be more frightening than the voice of authority of God? When you are aware that God is speaking, you may not realize that it's God, but there is something that makes you aware of the fact that this is not just Bubba from next door. If you are aware of the fact that there is something happening. I remember in 1976 when I was hiding from my nephew underneath the stairs and I heard the voice of God speaking to me. There was no question that it was the voice of God, and it scared me, but it changed my life, and it set me on the course that I have lived for the last 40-something years because I understood that it was the voice of God. You see, the voice of God reminds us that it makes us painfully aware of God's bigness and our smallness. It reminds us that we are not in control. It reminds us that we will be held accountable to someone that is bigger than ourselves. See, that's, a, that's what happens when we encounter God in our routineness. There is an anxiety. But God is not a bully. God understands our apprehension, and he calms us with the message of assurance. In the midst of that, God spoke. And knowing that those shepherds were afraid, God spoke. He says, don't be afraid. The angel spoke, I bring you good news that will bring you great joy to all people. See, God steps into our lives. He steps into our lives and he breaks into our routine not to destroy us but to build us. Not to harm us but to give us a future and a hope. God speaks into our sim in the simpleness of our everyday lives in order to let us know that he is with us and that he is Emmanuel and that he is accessible, that he is available and that he is relatable. That's why he steps into the simpleness of our lives. If, God had, if Jesus had come in the penthouse at the top of the hospital in a private room, then those, the janitors and the, 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 the waitresses and, and the poor people would have said, I don't have access to him. But when G Jesus stepped into our lives in a manger smelling like sheep dip, picking corn and flour out of his hair. See, then everybody could get to him. That's why God breaks into your life in the simpleness. Don't miss him because you're looking for the spectacular. Learn to listen in the middle of your simpleness because God is there. God doesn't want you to be fearful of him. He does not want us to live in futile and fruitless lives. He brings us a message of hope, of good news, of great joy. So what's the proper response? That's the encounter. Now that we're scared out of our wits and now that we've heard a great message, what's the proper encounter? What's the proper response to that? 
The proper response to Emmanuel's presence and his message is action. <laughs> After they said, they said, let's go. I hear that with basketball players all the time. They're on the court, and you holler. They holler, let's go, let's go. And that's what the shepherds, that's where they got it from. They, that didn't come from Steph Curry. That came from the shepherds. They went on a basketball court. They were in the middle of the, in the desert, out there in the fields, hollering, let's go. They said, let's go to Bethlehem, and let's see this thing that has happened. You see, they, they were aware of the presence of God, and yes, they were anxious, but then they were assured by a message of hope that something significant was happening, that the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, that Emmanuel had come, and he had come with the message of hope not to be afraid of, but to be embraced. And they said, let's go check this thing out. See, the shepherds did not continue to do what they had always been doing. They, could, they recognized that such a powerful message required an equally powerful response. God does not speak to us for the sake of conversation. God ain't lonely. <laughs> you know, he ain't talking just to be talking. God does not speak to us simply to transfer, transfer information. This is not a test. This is not just simply a lecture. God does not speak to us and give us directions so that we can simply evaluate those things. Well, let me, let me check that out. God, that's an interesting concept. Let's, I'll get back to you on that one. God doesn't give us information to evaluate. God gives us directives and God speaks to us. And God says, this is what I need, this is what I need your default response to my voice to be. Yes and Amen. It needs to be obedience. It needs to be, yes, I will say. Whatever you say to me is yes. There is no no when you're talking to the Lord. And then the result of that obedience, that next response, is astonishment. Is astonishment. Said all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing to think that the creator of all the universe, the everlasting God, knows you and cares about you? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I was, Sarah and I were watching a, a, a show the other night. It was, it was um, last Sunday we were watching 60 Minutes. And they were talking about this new telescope they got. I'm not sure if y'all saw that. But they have this new telescope that they say, if it works right, they will be able to see all the way back to the Big Bang. I was like, now, are there like little road markers on the universe somewhere? <laughs> like, how do you know when you've arrived at, at, that, at that particular spot? How do you know you're not just looking into your mama's backyard? How do you know that? But they swear that if they look through this telescope, if it works right, they will be able to see back through all of the hundreds and thousands of universes. I said, doesn't it just make sense to admit we don't know what the heck happened, but we know that God did it? <laughs> it that just makes sense to me. It takes a whole lot more faith to believe in your $10 billion telescope than it just does to say, in the beginning, God. <laughs> but you see, but to think that that God who created all of those universes, who created all of those stars, who created all of those galaxies, that God knows me by name. And that God has written you, your name, on the palm of his hand. And he says, I have the very hairs on your head numbered. Hallelujah. God knows I got hair. Y'all just can't see it. But God says this. God says, I want you to be astonished by that knowledge that God knows you, that God knows you, that he knows your name. But it's even more amazing, more astonishing that he, that Emmanuel, has come into your world, and not only does he know your name, he desires to have relationship 
with you. I told you all the story a few weeks ago when, when um, Colin Powell died. I remember the story that several years ago, about the time that Jason was born, I think, uh, I met Colin Powell and I was at a leadership event and he came into the room and he spoke to everybody when he came into the room. And then later on as he was speaking, he said something and I started laughing. I was all the way in the back of the room. And he looked up and he says, Jason, what you laughing about? And I went, Colin Powell knows my name. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Me and Colin, that's my old dog, you know. It was like Colin knows my name. Colin, Colin Powell knows my name. Can What more excitement should it be that the Lord of Lords, the creator, Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah Shalom, El Shaddai knows your name. Emmanuel. Have you pondered in amazed astonishment the miracle of God being with us. The miracle of God being with us. Mary thought about it. Mary said, wow, Emmanuel is with us. He's 
He's always been the great I am. Even as a little baby, he has been the great I am. He is the great He is, he is the great
Hmm. Hmm. I hope y'all was listening to that. Because there is something that you are going through right now. There is some pain. There is some difficulty. There is something in your past that you have held on to that you thought has disqualified you. But can you imagine being a 13, 14 year old girl with an unwanted pregnancy and thinking that your life is done? Thinking that your mama don't believe you and your daddy don't believe you and your boyfriend, your fiance don't want you anymore. And to think that God says, I have placed something inside of you. I've broken into the routineness of your life because I've placed greatness inside of you. Well, I, that, that's the, you know what that should do? That should do something to you. I told you, she shouldn't have sang that song. I'm ready to preach now. I'm just telling you right now, but I, I got to stop. Because when you stop and think about, I, I, I'm sitting here thinking about my life, and I'm thinking about how things started, and I'm thinking about my testimony, and I'm thinking about the things that should have been and the things that are instead of the things that could have been and what society said should have been. And I need you to stop and think about that right now, that God is doing something. But you got to hold on. You got to believe. In spite of your anxiety, in spite of all of that, you should respond with astonishment to think that the Lord of the universe has called your name and said, you are mine. There's a calling on your life. There's an anointing on your life as God steps in. And I don't know about you, but you know what? That makes me just want to shout. <laughs> and they said there was an adoration that came as a result of that. They said the shepherds, after they saw what God had done, how God had come into the lives of lowly, stinking shepherds, into the life of a little young girl that everybody had, had, had sold down the river, everybody other than her fiancé believed in her as he walked with her from disgrace to grace. And he says, the result of that, the shepherds saw that. And they said, the shepherds went away, went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for what they had seen and heard. I, I think it's time for us to glorify the Lord. It's time for us to, as, 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 as Kirk Franklin would say, to make some Holy Ghost crazy noise up in here. Because it is time to praise him because to adore him. So I just want to invite y'all to stand and to come with us. To come, let us adore him.
gonna be like that great choir this way. Why? Because you were the Lord. We worship. We worship you. You, yeah. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. We've got to look comfortable with where we are right now. Sometimes we have to remember the places and the spaces that God delivered us from. Amen. He's been too kind to us. Amen. You can go ahead and be seated. This is a candlelight Christmas Eve service, and it is time to light our candles. And so I'd like to invite our elders uh, to come on up if you're going to be lighting some of the candles, elders or deacons. Um, if you don't have a candle, uh, this is for all of us to participate in. You can just lift up your hand and there might, uh, an usher can bring you a candle if you need that. And if we could have all the lights off everywhere. And there's some profound symbolism in what we do in uh, shutting down all the lights except for the Christ candle. It's a reminder to us that Jesus came in a very dark time in human history where there was a lot of despair, 400 years of not hearing the Lord's voice and uh, oppressive Roman regime. And in this dark world, Jesus came to be a light and to bring life. But Jesus didn't just come 2,000 years ago. He comes into our dark world today filled with pandemics and filled with angst and filled with political and racial unrest. And he comes into this time right now to be to bring the light and life of Christ to visit us so that we might experience his hope, his love, his joy and his peace. And even as Christ came to give, a, bring light, we recognize that it's not just Christ who has the light, but Christ came to fill us. Do you remember those words of Jesus in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount? He said, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, neither do you light a lamp and put it under a bowl. No, you put it on a stand so that it gives light to everyone in the house. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So we come tonight to receive the light of Christ. All of our lights will be lit by the Christ candle, reminding us that Christ came to fill us with his light, and then that we share this light. And so we're going to see this light spread throughout this whole building. And it's not to stop there. We are to share the light of Christ wherever we go. Amen. And so I would encourage you. Um, we want to be blessed tonight. Uh, so what I would urge you to do is keep the lit candles upright. If you turn the candle to the side, then you get a nice wax bath, which does not make for a Merry Christmas, okay? So leave the lit candles uh, upright, and then put the unlit candles to the side and receive the light, and then hold it upright, the next person, and so on, okay? Now we're going to sing the beautiful words of that song, and as we sing that song, I want you to pay attention to the words of this song and let them touch your hearts. So let's stand as we receive the light of Christ.
rich that we get to be together on this beautiful night with our church family and to enjoy worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, to celebrate his life that has come and continues to come, and the fact that we get to share his love and light in a very dark world where there's a lot of need and a lot of hurt. So I'm going to give you a blessing. We have a closing song. And uh, following that closing song, you're going to want to extinguish this light so you don't ex uh, light someone else on fire, which, of course, would also be a damper on one's Christmas Eve. So uh, make sure you do that before you go, that you uh, extinguish that before you leave. But let me give us a blessing, and uh, let's sing together. Uh, the, the closing song, and then I would invite you to enjoy a very Merry Christmas. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace this Christmas. May you experience his light and life coming into you and may you share that light wherever you go. And may you experience the greatest gifts this Christmas, not the ones under the tree, but the ones that Jesus brought. The gifts of his hope and love and peace and joy. God bless you and have a very Merry Christmas. Amen. Amen.